Nigeria has problems that are more significant than she ever has, and very exacerbated by the fact that we were not the 60 or 70 million, perhaps, around the time of the first civil war. We're now allegedly, I don't believe those numbers personally, 200 million. I don't, don't think that we've ever had a bona fide census in Nigeria. And that was also the complicity of the parents, the foreign parents of Nigeria. And many of these issues need to be dealt with unless the truth is unveiled concerning our foundational years, our amalgamation, our independence, our first constitutions, we will not get it right in Nigeria. We will not get it right in Nigeria. You must continue to join me and pray and preach as to what the next president of Nigeria should look like. And the first thing is that we don't care what part of the country that person comes from. We care more about competence, capacity, vision, understanding how to lead a nation and build a country after so much debilitation. Secondly, apart from not caring what part of the country the next president comes from, the next president must be given to development and must have proven in his or her track record, public sector or private sector, that they can deliver and have delivered development. Nigeria needs to develop. Our roads, our healthcare, education. And that's why we have so much incompetence in leadership today because of the lack of education. So most times, much of our hope for great leadership is returnees. Nigeria has spent $2 billion every two years educating her children for the last 50, 60 years in the Western Hemisphere. But we've lost the majority of them to building other nations when they could be Nehemiahs and Ezra's building Nigeria. So we need somebody who understands development. Number three, we need a president who is not a genderist. In other words, we must embrace both genders. And you have genderists on both sides of the genders. We want people who are not genderists. Yeah. A family needs mother and father. A nation needs men and women to parent the next generations. I'm gonna ask you to remain standing. We also do not need a tribalist, sectionist, or ethnicist. That must not happen. And the constitutions must provide to exclude those sort of people from high executive office in all three tiers, all three arms of government. We also do not want a religionist, which is part of why I might not be considered. And I'm not looking for the job of president. I do not seek any elected office nor appointed office. I'm very happy operating in my calling and I'm slightly outside of it because of where the country is. We also need somebody who has brilliance, is well educated and hasn't left his or her education in the theoretic realm. So that practically they can deliver on vision, embrace even their opponents beautiful thing about Abraham Lincoln, he put all his opponents, he didn't define them as enemies, though some of them were, he put all of them at the table because he recognized that they have brilliant enough ideas to rise as the cream to the top of the polity and the politics of the day. And by this he was able to embrace ideas, amalgamate them or collaborate them into one singular vision to give Americans the opportunity, being all created equal, to pursue and aspire to a life of justice, freedom, peace, development, progress, and happiness. So we need somebody like that. That's not all. We also need somebody who can amass around himself, across the reach of governance and government, particularly in his or her cabinet, people who are like him or her, in competence, capacity, brilliance, and vision. 
so that every significant and peripheral ministry of state does well collaboratively to deliver on our national vision. And by God, we need a visionary who sees, lives, and breathes a better Nigeria, better than any other country on the face of this earth. It's possible. We have the brilliance. We have so many great Nigerians. And we have to find a way, my friends, to lock out the people who only go into politics and governance for personal gain and aggrandizement, for the allure of power and money. The purpose of power and money are not for aggrandizement. They are for the delivery of service. Democracy is the government of the people, for the people, by the people. And we're sick and tired, forgive my, my, my rudeness, of these idiots who cannot see beyond their noses. If you're not good enough for the job, leave it. Too many people are suffering, living, living beneath their privilege, living beneath our opportunity as an aggregated whole. And for goodness sake, it is time that if we call ourselves a federal republic, one, we must be republican, and two, we must be federating. This is not a federal republic. I see nothing republican about Nigeria, and there's nothing federating about Nigeria. This is a situation where the, the, the center determines everything. And the center feeds the components. In a federation, the components feed the center. And the center is only responsible for national matters like border integrity, national defense. And when you don't have that, you impede the growth of the various components of the federation. That's why some states are just downright lazy. And by my last estimates, I'm not an accountant. I think there are at best three viable states that have some measure of self-sufficiency. So when Lagos delivers 5.3 trillion naira in royalties, customs, ports, taxes, and duties, um, and VAT and the likes, it goes to the center and the center appropriates it to lazy states. Lazy states with leaders who have no vision except grab power, grab land, and take what isn't yours. Whilst you're standing on top of gold all over the country, bauxite, tantalite, all kinds of minerals, we don't lack the resources. And we have resourceful people. Nigeria can be great, and it will be such a travesty and tragedy if our time comes and goes and we don't lay the foundation for a great nation. If I catch any one of you in government and you don't deliver service or you become a thief there, I will give you problems and I will ask God to give your generations problems. I'm speaking to those of you in House on the Rock. Otherwise, go into business and make money there. Leave government for service delivery. You're ruining millions of lives. We wouldn't have beggars on the street if government would do her business. And I'm not speaking of this administration. I'm speaking of all administrations. And I include the British administrations that govern Nigeria. We've got to do something about it. And you must be a critical voice to encourage those who do right in governance and leadership and in politics. And also you must be a publishing generation that publish the truth. Don't just forward anything you get on WhatsApp, verify it. If it is truth, publish it. Governance is not merely the business of those in the state house. It is your business. You have a voice and you are their employee, employer. And when you correlate your voice, work together in a pyramid, the bloggers, the vloggers, the news media, the broadcasters, the anchors, and every one of you with a smartphone, use it and hold government to accountability. It is their responsibility to be accountable to the people who employed them. And that's why that 99th constitution needs to be prop. In fact, it ought to be jettisoned and an authentic document of the people and her best representatives need to come together and put together the terms of our agreement as federating regions or components and the laws that work for our country. We now live in a situation where men are writing unjust laws and the purpose of law is justice. But when the unjust write laws, they write injustice and that's what we have to live by. And of course, because our education is so bereft 
of learning as a nation, we, we, we settle for a bag of rice, a bag of oil, and a bribe for a vote. And it won't last those to whom they give it more than a few days or weeks. And then we go back to penury. I believe that every Nigerian should have equal opportunity. Not all five fingers are created equal, but opportunity should be equal. And especially for those who want it, they should be able to reach out and get it. But you've denied more than 80% of the population opportunity. We must dumb what I've just said. We must dumb it down to the market woman that she can understand it in her language. The pedestrian, the person who sells guru or zobo in all parts of the country so that every single individual can hear it. I've done my job this morning for our country. Those of you who know how to dumb it down, take it, run with it and publish. 1,000 persons cannot defeat the thought college of 200 million so-called Nigerians. Mass is on our side. And this is not a fight. We may be ideological opponents to others, but that is our right. It is our just right and freedom as citizens of this country. Otherwise, take away my passport and lock me in jail. I say this because no country in the world history has survived two civil wars. You could be in flight and running for dear life any day from now if this thing does not come to an end. And my personal encouragement to leaders and government of all sides, it's not time to be partisan. Blend the aisles. It's time to sit down and dialogue. And don't be short-sighted and let's look towards a future that still has brightness in it because as long as there is a creator who has vested so much in this land and her people, there is hope for a future. And we must rise to that possibility. Put away your petty crop, crop squabbles, squibbles, and let's recognize that we are one brotherhood as created by God. And we are one brotherhood or fraternity, sorority, if you like, of persons who call Nigeria our homeland, our fatherland.